hear me? Have you heard about this new thing? It's called machine learning. It will develop super intelligence. It's super dangerous, driven by those scientists who don't know what they're doing. You have to be super careful. I'll never leave the house without my bulletproof vest on. Be careful, it's everywhere. It's gonna get you. Oh no, it's there. If you believe that serious plotting turns to have humanity or that your Roomba is eyeing you suspiciously, this one's for you. So let's take a short journey through the wild world of AI doomsday spheres and see why, for now, we can all just chill. All AI safety experts on social media agree on this. Beware of your TVs, your phones, your smart fridges, they're conspiring to take over the world. Sound absurd? Welcome to the current discourse on AI safety. On one side, we have prophets of doom predicting an AI apocalypse. On the other, folks brushing off AI as nothing more than fancy calculators. So where's this coming from? Today's AI is weak and strong AI or artificial general intelligence, AGI, doesn't exist. But hey, if we mix both up, we can easily imagine a world where your coffee machine not only brews the perfect latte, but also contemplates the meaning of existence. Welcome to the weak vs. strong AI debate, a decade-long saga that's more entertaining than a marathon of Black Mirror. Weak AI is like that co-worker who's exceptional at Excel, but doesn't question why the company card pays for his boss's yacht. It's all about developing specialized systems capable of performing tasks that require specialist intelligence, without the messy emotions or consciousness. Think of them as the overachieving robots who get the job done and clock out. On the flip side, strong AI aspires to build machines that can do everything we do including pondering why pizza tastes better at 2 a.m. The main argument here is straightforward. If the brain is just a super complex computer, then theoretically we could replicate human intelligence on other computing devices. It's like saying, if humans can do it, surely a well-coded algorithm can do too. But there are a few party crashers, in particular for the good old-fashioned AI. Just when the strong AI proponents were getting excited, along came some philosophical heavyweights to throw a wrench in this works. First up, we have the Gödelian argument, proposed by J.R. Lucas and later expanded by physicist Roger Penrose. This argument uses Gödel's incompleteness theorems to suggest that there are limits of what machines can compute. In other words, there are some things robots just can't wrap up their circuits around. It's like telling a calculator to appreciate a Shakespearean sonnet. Good luck with that. Next, Hubert Dreyfus chimed in and pointed out that human expertise isn't just about crunching numbers or manipulating symbols. He argued that good old-fashioned AI focus on symbolic processes misses the boat entirely. Human cognition involves tacit knowledge, intuition and is deeply rooted in our physical and social experiences things you can't download from the cloud. It's like trying to explain a joke to Siri, sometimes she just doesn't get it. And there is one more classical argument left. Let's talk about the key argument of AGI critiques, John Searle's Chinese room argument. Picture a temple straight out of a Renaissance painting adorned with intricate Western interpretations of Chinese motives. The only axis is a small slot written messages in Chinese go in and come out. Inside, a scholar is surrounded by mountains of scrolls feverishly looking at a rule book to answer messages without understanding a word of Chinese. To the outsiders who can't peek in, it seems like the room understands Chinese, but really it's all smoke and mirrors, or in that case, syntax and symbols. 
the big reveal, syntax isn't semantics. Shell's point, just because a system can manipulate symbols to produce the right responses, doesn't mean it understands the meaning behind them. It's like using translate for a love letter. You might get the words right, but you won't have a romance with Google Translate. So the singularity, is it sci-fi or soon-fi? Despite all the naysayers, some people are clutching their copies of the Terminator and Space Odyssey, insisting that an AI singularity is just around the corner. And let's forget about the difference between weak and strong AI, we just mix them together. The classical argument is laid out like a recursive recipe for disaster. Premise 1. Humans can create AI, the Frankenstein lightning bolt. Premise 2. AI creates even smarter AI+. Plus. Premise 3. AI+, plus creates AI++, plus plus, and so on until we are all batteries in a machine world. Looking at you, Neo. Alright, this type of proof by recursion is really useful. You know, one sock fits into a suitcase. One more sock always fits in. Suitcases can fit an infinite amount of socks. We should ban socks and suitcases as they have the potential to develop into a black hole. And that's the catch in any such slippery slope arguments. What's the actual gradient? Also, for the case of today's AI, the slippery slope turns into a more of a gentle bunny hill. Think of it like this. Proponents of the singularity are betting on Moore's law, expecting exponential growth in computing power to lead us straight into the arms of our AI overlords. But there's the kicker. Current AI models improve at logarithmic pace with increasing compute. So if you're expecting exponential improvements, you're in for disappointment, as bitter as decaf coffee. In plain English, even if we throw a gazillion processors at an AI, it's not suddenly going to become HAL 9000. It's more like HAL 9.0. Slightly faster, but not plotting a space mutant. As for AI creating better versions of itself, we're not there yet. Neural architecture search shows some promise, but it also requires even more computational power because you're throwing an evolutionary process in which a single individual is trained for 355 GPU years for the case of GPT-3. That's even slower than Deutsche Bahn. Now let's get serious for a moment. Yes, even in a funny video post. While we're busy worrying about Skynet, we're ignoring the real issues. Weak AI, sorry AI, it's not personal, poses significant risks today. Deep fakes spreading misinformation. AI algorithms enabling mass surveillance. And yes, even autonomous weapons or killer robots are already in use in the Ukraine war, for example. This is the stuff that we need to be worried about. Fortunately, the European Union is already on it with the AI Act, aiming to regulate AI before it can ghost us all on social media. In the grand scheme of things, the fear of AI enslaving humanity is as overblown as the hype around the latest superhero movie. The challenges in creating a machine that can generally think, feel and binge Netflix are immense. And even if we could, the computational demands would make high-end GPU clusters look like an abacus. So unless there's a breakthrough that propels us light years ahead, like solving P equals MP, we are quite safe from becoming robot servants. For now, let's focus on the actual issues, like making sure AI doesn't cause mass societal problems. In the meantime, Feel free to ask Alexa to play your favorite song without fearing she'll command your smart home and lock you out. While it's important to consider the ethical implications of AI, fearing an imminent rebellion is like worrying about the moon falling onto Earth. Let's rather focus on making AI better, more reliable and less likely to misunderstand our actions. Last disclaimer. 
no robots were harmed in the making of this video. We can't say the same for inflated egos and unfounded fears. See you soon. Bye bye.